following program is brought to you by Lou Reed is an American Table, Blackwater Barrels, the Nash Community College Brewing Institute, and Double Barley Brewing Company. Butter, Vice President for Instruction and Chief Academic Officer at Nash Community College and I'm here today with our, our campus brewmaster, uh, Thomas Glosson. I know right off the top it's a, kind of an interesting term, Thomas, to have for a campus, a community college campus, to have a brewmaster. But uh, it's hard to have a brewing distillation and fermentation program on a campus without having a brewmaster. So, welcome. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you. Glad to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think one of the interesting things that probably people would like to know about is, is really how we got the program started and, and then I'll let you jump in to talk a little bit about the program. So uh, about three years ago, NAS Community College partnered with uh, three other community colleges, AB Tech, Blue Ridge and uh, Rockingham Community College. And what we did is really laid out a curriculum um, for brewing, distillation and fermentation with a real focus on the brewing aspect, um, knowing that Craft brewing is, is on the rise in, in the United States and really on the rise in North Carolina. Right. Um, I think, you know, maybe 10 years ago there might have been six to 10 craft breweries and now what? Maybe 100, 100, 100 maybe, right. maybe 150 actually. Um, and so really, we, we really saw an opportunity and if you look at a map, there's a big void, right? There's a lot of brewing in the western part of the state and right. some along the coast, but there is a massive void in terms of craft brewing right here in, in and around Nash County, but that's not to say there's a, a void of interest. Um, we have a, a, a number of folks that have um, come to the campus, both through our initial program, the 360 degree brewer that we did in continuing education, and now with our actual curricular program. Right. And I know you've got um, about eight or 10 students regularly enrolled in, in the classes that we've offered in the fall and spring semester. Right. Um, so of course our program, because there, were, there are not or were not a lot of brewer, breweries here, our program was built around a business model to teach students the science of brewing, and again that's where you come in, and really the small business development because we want our, um, our, brewer, our, our brewing students to not only learn the ins and outs of you know, you know, the, the fermentation practices, the distillation practices, the actual science behind the right. brewing, but really um, understanding how to put together a business model and really stepping out on their own so they can transition from making five gallons of beer to making 5,000 gallons of beer right. and making, it, making a product that everyone loves and that they can turn their passion into a business model. So help, help me understand because I'm a fan of brewing and a fan of beer and, and the business of, of beer making and enjoying. But help me understand a little bit, Thomas, and the, and the, and the folks that are watching, the science behind the brewing because I think they're there are only three or four ingredients to making beer, right. but it's the way you put them together. Yes, it's, it's absolutely the way you put them together, and then you have to appreciate everything that's going on during the process. So making beer, you kind of got to combine different disciplines of science. So you need engineering, you need microbiology or biology, you need um, a chemistry experience as well. So kind of a hodgepodge of all these different hardcore scientific disciplines come together, and lo and behold, thousands of years ago, people developed and learned and discovered how to make beer. So now with all of the current technology and knowledge and science that we have, we know exactly what's going on during different parts of the process. It's not just magically happening or luckily happening, but when you control all the parameters and different things going on, um, you can get a consistent uh, high quality uh, product in beer that we enjoy to drink. So. I guess the question is, how do you know all this stuff? <laughs> how do I know all this stuff? Well, uh, um, like Dr. Morebutter here, I spent my time at uh, NC State University, so initially did biology, uh, worked a little bit, came back to school and found food science and bioprocessing and biopharmaceuticals, so I specialized in that. And um, for my graduate research work, I studied beer under Dr. Shepard at NC State University as well, so that kind of got um, research and real world experience making beer on a larger scale. This is a basically a half, half barrel system. Um, 
or not even, <laughs> a, a sixth system, a sixth of a barrel system. Um, so at NC State, we use a two, two barrel system, so it's a little bit larger, a little bit different things, but the step-by-step -step creation of beer is the same, regardless of the size. So that's all also good to teach and learn the students, like very small scale, and then they can apply this knowledge to scale up um, to larger scales. Right, so yeast, I'm guessing, you, you're, you're yeast. studying yeast, that's a pretty important component of, yes. of making beer? Yes, so I guess I should talk about the main, four main components of making beer. So there's a German purity law. Um, so we knew that water, hops, and barley were the three initial ingredients, and lo and behold, fermentation happened, and the fourth ingredient was later discovered once somebody came along and developed the microscope <laughs> yeah. and said, hey, it's actually yeast that's doing it. So the four main ingredients are yeast, water, barley, and hops. So that's part of the German purity law. So that's how I learned how to make beer at NC State. You can use all sorts of other things other than barley. You can use other cereal grains, but it's mainly those four components of most beers you drink today. Yeah. So I know that the students that have been involved so far are really excited. In fact, we've had a couple of students both in the continuing education program and um, with, with the curricular program that have actually already stepped out into the business model. I think yep. um, uh, one, of our, one of our students, um, Eric Galoni, um, he and, and a couple other folks have, have uh, gone out in a venture and started Koi Pond Brewing right. in conjunction with the brew mill. The brew mill, you say? Oh. <laughs> so, so what's that all about? So um, Rocky Mount is, is almost famous for, of course, its, its mill site, its textile mill site that has been vacant for, gosh, since the mid-80s. I think it yep. was an operational mill until about the mid-80s. Um, and has, it really, it's just been there ever since. And, and I know that... Um, the owners of Capital Broadcasting, who are also have revitalized downtown Durham with right. the tobacco campus, uh, the Goodman family, they purchased the land some time ago and, and the mill itself some time ago, 10 to 12 years ago, I think About it was. 10, yeah. um, and, and, and that has been an, an, uh, really just an exciting coincidence for us is that they also um, have dipped their foot into the pool of, of, of beer making as well. And by dip their foot, I mean, you know, <laughs> exactly. So. Um, you know, what has grown from a, an idea about helping students move, helping people move from a passion and their garage in a five-gallon bucket has actually already started to make inroads to that uh, creating business, crafting of their own business in conjunction with the brew mill here in Rocky Mount. Um, I know that we've got a couple other folks. I think Sweet Taters is, is they, I don't know that they've started brewing yet, but they've been through the um, Con Ed program as well. Right. Um, and, and I know that uh, as the brew mill continues to, as they continue the renovation and revitalization of that site, um, they have got a projected classroom and lab with a, a little bit larger yeah. than the one six barrel system for us down there. So our students will actually get to, to really understand the science of the brewing in, in this lab on our campus. And then as they become more and more masterful, they'll, they'll transition onto a larger campus at, right. the, at the actual brew mill site in, in downtown, well not quite downtown, but on the way to downtown Rocky Mount. So we're real excited about that. It's, it's kind of, again, a win-win, right? Right, uh, right. At, at Nash Community College, we like to say community is our middle name, and that's <laughs> one of the reasons. I have another question. You've sure. mentioned barrel. Now I've mentioned barrel. What does that actually mean, a oh, barrel system? Just a barrel is just a metric or a, a volumetric term, so it's 31 and a half gallons is a barrel. Um, so just the, the different sizes of the system. So right here is kind of the mash tun, so we're this is where the uh, grains and water, um, you kind of cook it up, kind of like making coffee. It's kind of like steeping, uh, making coffee and draining, draining the liquid. So this, this, this size here is 15 and a half gallons, so that's one sixth of a barrel. So just bigger, 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 bigger mm -hmm. size of the room um, is the next step up. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks very much. Right. The wall, Coming up on Crafting the Brew. What you're actually able to do. And really, that's what the credential is. It, it really gives you that step, that standard that says you've met these criteria that says not only can you make beer, not only can you sell beer, but you're doing it the right way and you're right. doing it the right way every single time. I guess right. that's, that's uh, obviously a real important po point of that. This is Lou from Lou Readers and American Table, inviting you to come in and taste the made from scratch food at our table. We make all our dressings and sauces in-house with fresh chalkboard specials every day, North Carolina craft beers on all our taps, over 20 varieties of bourbon, jumbo wings, and the best burgers in town. Made from scratch food without the made from scratch prices. 
located on Sunset Avenue across from the Harris Teeter. Open seven days a week for lunch and dinner, brunch on Sundays. So Thomas, you were talking about the, the barrel and, and what that represents in right. terms of gallons of beer. So we have a, a, a rather small system, as you mentioned, a one six barrel. And I know that um, when I've step, stuck my head in the classes, it's, it's, I think it's actually, it seems like an actual advantage for the students to be able to make Absolutely. those smaller quantities and kind of work out the bugs. Right. Um, how many actual batches of beer have you, have you all made since the inception of the program? Uh, that's a good question. How many batches of beer? We've probably made around 25 during the two semesters, so... A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Quite, quite a few. So, you know, w once a week or once every other week, we'll, we will make a batch of beer in one of the classes, depending on what's going on and what's being taught at the time. Just so, so do you decide what you're going to make, or did the students bring recipes, or is it... It's a mixture of both. Like, one class we had students just, you know, your homework assignment is develop a recipe, and then, oh, next week, hey, we're going to make your recipe now. So that was part of uh, some of the learning process last semester. Um, some things, we get an idea for a beer, we want to recreate it, so we've done that. We made a beet saison, just had it, tried it. It's commercially available now by Fonta Flora, won a gold medal. So we were like, hey, we can do that here, so just plug, plug, plug drop some beats in there. Um, but the benefit of the small system, like this is what, what you would call an industry, a pilot system. So pilot scale just means a very small scale. So you can kind of work out the kinks, kind of get ingredients percentages worked out. And then your pilot system could be scaled up to a much, much larger system. So a lot of brewers will have something like this, a small investment to have a pilot system. So they kind of know what's going on with the different styles of beer they may be trying to create or recreate, or who knows, they can do whatever with it. And you dump five gallons is a lot harder, a lot easier for the uh, individual and the company to swallow than we have $2,000 worth of raw ingredients in this batch and the batch has gone bad right. and it goes down the drain. Right. So this is kind of a good, you know, get your, uh, grind your teeth, get your ears wet type system. Um, a lot of uh, commercial breweries will have something like this or larger, obviously, right. for their pilot systems because they're making so much quantities, but it's a good, you know, the same thing applies to here as it would a larger system, so that's right. kind of the benefit of it to teach them on this small scale. So I'd mentioned before the entrepreneurial nature of our, of our program, really that's entrepreneurial in and, it's, in and of itself. You're asking students to be inventive and creative, and if the recipe doesn't quite work out, you just, it's, it's not a big loss, right? Right, right. How, how, how many batches have you had to pour down the drain so far? We've had zero batches poured down the drain. <laughs> well, so that's, that's, I think that bodes well for the creativity of the class so far. Yeah, that's yeah, we've, we've made really good stuff and it's turned out very well. So, uh, not, to, not to be surprised, but it's, yeah. some of it's really, really good. Well, and, and I will say we, had, we hosted Bluefest on the campus on May the 7th, and yep. wow, um, I know the, at the end of the day, well, in the morning, we had a, a, a smaller beer sampling with the class, and then at the end of that day, um, and we had four or five different varietals of, of, of beer that the class was uh, right. very proud of, including the beet saison, which I must say was, you know, you think about beet beer, what comes to mind is, eh, but I'm going to tell you what, it was, yeah. I will say, surprisingly good. Um, the cider, an absolute knockout hit. Gluten-free option. The hop drop um, shandy was fantastic. The Nighthawk, the McCaven that you all have developed, that's... Um, that, I mean, it's just, it, it's really exciting to see, and, and, the, and the pride, you know, at a community college, one of the things that we, we just take such pride in is watching what the students do when they create something, when they create something that is so well respected by everyone that gets an opportunity to see it, read it, try it, from an essay in an English 111 class that a student is proud of, to something in the machining class that the students create, a lighthouse or a clock. Um, the, yeah. the brewing students, it was no different. They yeah. were beaming ear to ear because of the, re the response. I think we had about 100, 150 people out yeah. um, at the end of the day um, between the culinary, the pizza exposition going on and the tasting with that. But the, the, the brewing products were, were just a, a massive hit, the, the, right. not a negative comment. Um, so that, that's, that's real exciting. So we've talked a little bit about the continuing education program and, and the curricular program. Is it, is it a full two-year degree? Are there... Yes. Yes, yeah, so, so, so it is a, two, uh, a full two-year degree. It's associate in science degree, so it's around 72 credit hours to get your two-year degree, two degree. But we're also offering two certificates. One is a mainly an online certificate, and one is mainly an in-class, uh, hands-on lab-type certificate. But the uh, online certificate that is going live this summer, uh, you will have to take a business class, so an introduction to business, a beverage management class, a beverage marketing and sales class, which is online, 
and illegal issues in fermentation class, which is online, which is taught by Professor Quintard uh, over the summer. And classes start pretty soon, so if you are interested. So that would be ideal for someone that's already kind of got the brewing down and saying, look, I, I, I'm good at this. Everybody loves my beer. If you take that online credential, boom, you've got a certificate that's going to allow you to go out there and really take those first steps. Hang a, hang a certificate on right. the wall that obviously um, provides some authenticity to what you're actually able to do. And really, that's what the credential is. It, it really gives you that step, that standard that says you've met these criteria that says not only can you make beer, not only can you sell beer, but you're doing it the right way and right. you're doing it the right way every single time. I guess right. that's, that's obviously a real important point of that. Because, you know, as we've talked about, you and I have talked about many times, it's one thing to make a, a good beer in a, in a bucket, you know, which is kind of what garage beer is making. I've done that. Yep. I always think it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, always, <laughs> it's always with mixed reviews. But I will say that um, when, when you bring those ingredients at a, a very specific scientific measure, you know that you're making, the beer you're making, the way it's, you're, it, the taste at the end is how you plan for it to taste. Right. And the critical piece of that is for the student to be able to recreate that every single time. Absolutely. And I guess going from that five, five gallons or that one six barrel up to a two barrel or a five barrel or a 20 barrel system, knowing that they can reproduce that time after time. Yes. And that's what customers want, right? Absolutely, yeah. If you, just like people go to McDonald's and fast food joints, you have a hamburger in China, it tastes exactly as it does in Georgia. So that's kind of the importance of reproducibility and also, you know, you got your name brand on it, so you're stamping yourself and your heart into the product. So you want consumers to enjoy it and get the same thing every time. So talk to us a little bit as well about the safety, the sanitation, because I know that that's a huge, Huge component. I mean, right. you know, when you're home brewing and you and you wash out the bottles and and you, and and all of a sudden you open it up a month later and it's all funky tasting and yeah. it's got a skunky smell to it. I mean, it it dawns on a person right away that I probably didn't clean that properly. So right. these the system that's here and and the bottles and the kegs and all. I mean, I, I guess safety sanitation that's a huge piece of it. Yeah, it's a huge piece. Like you don't realize how much water it takes to make beer, but you pretty much to make one gallon of beer you go through around eight to ten maybe even a lot more gallons of water just to create it but a lot of it's cleaning sanitation moving stuff around cooling stuff um but yes yeah, so you during the boil process which is after the the when you create the wort you sterilize it and you add hops during that same process so you have a sterile product high high in sugar so anything in the air any bacteria fungus or yeast everywhere, anywhere, can get in there, start eating your sugars, make weird flavors, so you wanna curb that, make sure everything's clean and sanitized, um, add your one thing you want in there, which is your yeast, add enough of it so it can have a good fermentation, and there the magic happens, and um, a couple weeks later, you'll have alcoholic beer. Yeah, I mean, look, I, th I think that, you know, beyond the making part, I think what's real exciting is, I haven't met one of the students yet, and, and unfortunately I get to stick my head in here fairly regularly. As the chief academic officer, it's pretty important I keep my eyes on the program, right? right? <laughs> but one of the things that it always excites me every time I stick my head into one of your classes is, is the passion from the students, and I use that word a lot because I think that's, that's key with beer makers. Yeah. But what's exciting for these students is that even some of them that have worked um, as second or third brewers in, in a large brewing facility, their creativity has not been allowed to come out. And I think right. that's one of the things right. that the class allows them to do, yeah. is really that experiment and create their own, own types of beers. That even if they were working for a Sierra Nevada or something like that, I'm thinking they probably wouldn't get a chance to do that. It's very true. Just like the adage of there's no stupid question, there's no bad idea in trying to make beer. You can throw all sorts of thousands of different ingredients together and who knows, it may be the best thing ever. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that that's, that's obviously one of the exciting pieces. The other, the other thing is, is just as much as that, I, I stuck my head in here one time and, and there was no beer making, there was no creativity. They all had pencil and paper in hand with a calculator bes beside them. And I, I, I mean, I didn't want to interrupt class, but I couldn't help but think that this really is a scientific type of a class, isn't it? So when you're doing the lab part, Absolutely. the piece that goes ahead of that. So yeah. what was going on that day? So that was for our beverage technology and calculations class. So about that's one of the nine classes that are more scientific based. And there's two classes that I mentioned that are more online based, the uh, uh, legal issues and marketing and sales type classes so <clears throat> you just got to crunch numbers to figure out the calculation so <laughs> I, I they have to struggle through it but that's also part of the learning process if it's tough 
it may be hard to learn, but once you get it, you got it, and you can't, nobody can take that away from you. Fantastic, fantastic. So Thomas, you've mentioned the ingredients that go into it, and I know there are a lot of different flavors, and a lot of, I mean, between how the hops and how much hops you put in there, but I also know that it's not uncommon to drop some berries in there, I mean, just to get those different flavors, and I know that probably one of the things that's exciting when you came to the campus is to see what our president, Dr. Carver, has created across the campus. Right. I know you made some, some mead, We've got honeybees on the campus, so that, that production, we've got large and small fruit orchards on the campus um, with plans to, to, to do a barley field and, right. and grow our own hops. Yes, yes, so, the, so, so some of the classes that are involved in the curriculum will be specialty crops, horticulture class of how to grow and propagate hops. Yeah, and I know that's part of what Dr. Carver, again, our, um, President Carver's vision for really the whole hospitality group of classes, the culinary program, yeah. the hospitality restaurant management, and of course the brewing distillation and fermentation, is to really bring that all together so that students can walk out of Nash Community College and, and really enter that aspect of, of business at, at any level. And, right. and to know that our students are already doing that obviously is a huge source of pride for us, but it also lets us know that we're doing, doing what we're supposed to be doing. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time, Thomas. No thanks Thank very you. much. Next time. On the beer side, like you said, we're getting local sweet potatoes uh, from Hickory Meadows Organics uh, up in uh, Whitakers. We're getting uh, our barley, our malt from a uh, place in Durham, Epiphany Malts. Uh, and we've got a hop farm right down in Wilson, Cardinal Pine, that we go to. The preceding program has been brought to you by Lou Rita's An American Table, Blackwater Barrels, the Nash Community College Brewing Institute, and Double Barley Brewing Company.